You weren't setting out to write a bachelor book. There's definitely some tea in there. There is tea. I wanted to get my side of who I am and what I've been through out there. All right, Matt, I got to, a chance to tell you that I did read the book. Yep. It also just explained like why you are the way you are, why you did The Bachelor. I also know that you had a, a huge influence in that decision because before you were even named The Bachelor, you actually passed on The Bachelorette multiple times. Yeah. But it was your friend Tyler Cameron's mom that convinced you. Yeah. What do you think she would say if she could see you today? Man, I think she would just say that she's proud of us. You know, myself and Tyler included, because this journey wouldn't have taken place for me if it wasn't for Tyler mm -hmm. taking that leap of faith and me seeing the reform man that came back from that experience. Hello. The women are literally falling for you. <laughs> so then, instead of The Bachelorette, you are named The Bachelor. And with wow. that, the first black bachelor. Uh, you mentioned in the book that at, there was a point where you felt like you feared you were gonna be tokenized by the network or by the show. How so? You know, there hadn't been someone like myself stepping into that position. And with everything that was going on in the country at that time, I wanted my experience to be raw and truthful to my experience and yeah. not what someone thought that experience should look like or what someone thought someone in my position should act like. Yeah. I wanted it to be shot authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Love for me is about the heart, and there's not a color you can put on that. Ooh, it's hot in here. <laughs> you know, you also explained that you weren't Bachelor Nation. Like, you didn't watch <laughs> The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Yeah, you know, that yeah. wasn't your thing, and yet you still signed on to do it. So 100%. I'm curious, would you have said yes to becoming The Bachelor had you been a little more familiar with the franchise? Uh, I, I would have, because I, and, and it's only off the context of the people that I had conversation with. The Sean Lowe's of the world, yes. the Ben Higgins, yeah. you know, my, my homie Tyler Cameron, having conversation with Rachel Lindsay, like people that I respect as humans before them being a personality or figurehead, right. um, those type of conversations were like, dang, like this is something that I can see personal growth in. I, I'm happy where I'm, I'm at. You meet the love of your life, Rachel. Of course, we all know the controversy, we don't have to relive it now. But what was it like for you to have to relive it though in this book? And was there any part of you was, that was uh, afraid or hesitant to share too much when it came to your relationship and, and that fallout from that? Experience? Yeah, I mean, you're walking on eggshells when you talk about that stuff because it's, it's real. Yeah, and exactly. uh, I, I wanted to make sure that when I'm uh, expressing our story, Rachel and mine, because we went through that together, that I was in constant communication with Rachel when I'm sharing how she wants that portrayed. The feelings that I have for you don't go away overnight. Um, you know, a lot of people had opinions on your relationship with Rachel before those photos even surfaced. You yeah. kind of mentioned that earlier. Do you feel like your relationship with Rachel is getting more support these days, though, at least publicly? I think as people get to know Rachel and I better, then they understand our relationship, mm -hmm. you know? In the context of a show and how it's presented there, you know, it doesn't give a, a full picture, and it's not their job to give that, you know? They can't present everything, so as we continue to live out our lives, I think people see that we're real, authentic, we love each other, and it's not for show. You can tell from your, uh, you recounting falling in love with her that it is the real deal. And that's, I, f I feel like that's what brought you guys back together is true love. So now I'm curious, like, are we thinking about a ring? Are we talking about <laughs> engagement? Like, is that where we're headed? Hey, man. That's the real tea I wanna who, who know. Who put you up to this? <laughs> Where's Rachel at? I'll say this, I'll say that at this point in my life, I wouldn't be dating someone or with somebody that I wouldn't consider marrying so uh, that's that's the end goal and that's what we're working towards well, i can't propose to you today but that doesn't mean i want to lose you i'm curious though like as you were writing it you know what was the hardest part and how did you feel now that it's out and like on paper <sighs> denny i would say the hardest part was actually going on the show because oh. you know um I had my doubts if something like that could work, yeah. and I'm fortunate that you know I put those aside because I'm in a great relationship now That's with right. Rachel. But um, I'm like, can I really put myself out there and be vulnerable enough to let these women in on the things that I've been through? Because I've had a crazy life, right? And I have a crazy family. Yes. But everyone has a crazy family, and everyone's been through crazy stuff. So. Speaking of your, of your family, uh, your mom is featured in this book. She supported you at the Boston Marathon last oh, week, yeah, that's she not right? There. She's yeah. your ride or die, huh? She's, she's a real one. Well, you dedicated this book to her, and we know that Rachel says she cried reading the book, but what was your mom's reaction? You know, there's a lot of things in the book that my mom, I hadn't shared with my mom before. Wow. 
Yeah, so she was reading a lot of that for the first time, time especially wow. from a standpoint of how I felt being the product of a mixed relationship. I think a lot of that went under the radar because she's so busy working. Obviously, the book also goes in depth into your childhood, your evolving relationship with your dad, which by the way, you know, America was introduced to him in one scene on The Bachelor. And of course, there was some controversy around that. No one is perfect, son. Look around you in this world. Who is perfect? I'm not perfect. You're not perfect yourself. Uh, what's your relationship with your dad like today? We have a great relationship. You do? Yeah, and I think that, again, without the context of what my dad's been through, yeah. not to give a lot away, but I mean, his father was murdered. And the things that he brought into the relationship with my mom mm -hmm. and through his childhood was so traumatic, and I didn't have context to that. So as you gain perspective of things, uh, my empathy and compassion for the way things were handled changes. Whatever I can do to make it better, I'll work on it. I want you to be happy too for the rest of your life, and I want you to have a relationship that's healthy and not like what I went through. So through the good and the bad of this experience, it doesn't feel like a sour journey to you? I'll say this. I'll say that it's a shame that there's the amount of people that go through this experience with that sour taste in their mouth because I feel like it doesn't have to be like that. Mm. But that being said, you have to make sure that the show that you're continuing to build out yeah. caters to the audience because if, if, if you're having to, you know, do circus acts and trapeze mm. stuff to get, you know, strum up this like fake hype, then like maybe you should get back to the basics. And there's other factors to consider, I think is what you're also saying about exactly. like, you know, what you're gonna say yes to. Exactly. Cheers to falling in love. All right, so this co book covered the first 30 years of your life, Matt. What do the next 30 look like for you? The next 30 years, oh, that's a great question. Um, a, a lot of, of personal growth and a lot of, uh, Get, giving back and getting into the community because oh. through the pandemic, I saw that's where my heart and my passion is, is the people. Right. I saw how the mental health and the physical health took a toll on people during the pandemic. I feel a responsibility knowing what I know to do better and serve those people who were, who were affected by it.